Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Now, we're continuing our look into the book of Job, and today, we find ourselves in a very painful, disheartening chapter. I hope as you read this chapter that you felt the anguish that is in this man, that you felt his pain, that you felt his desperation. Maybe you too at one time have been there. Maybe even now you are there where you have hit rock bottom and nothing seems glorious any longer except facing death itself. Well, that's where we find Job today. You see, Job has been attacked twice. He's lost everything that is dear to him. He has sat in silence for seven days, and now his three friends slash four have come to visit with him. And the first friend has spoken and given his declaration to Job as to what he feels the problem might be. Job now responds to this friend and to the others who are sitting quietly, not speaking up on his behalf, and this is his response. Now, I trust that you have read Job chapter 6 already. If you haven't, you need to pause this video, read chapter 6, and then come back and listen. Now, because I'm trusting that you have read this chapter and you are familiar with it, I'm going to point some things out from this chapter, even read some captions from this chapter from the Message Bible. It is critically important for you to understand what is taking place here. And you're not going to get it any clearer than from the Message Bible. But if you've read it from your Bible, King James Version, New King James Version, New International Version, or whatever version you may be reading, Many of these thoughts are going to come back to your mind because you already have it in place. It may not even be a bad idea to open your Bible to Job chapter 6 and read along with me. Even though the language is going to be much different, I assure you, friends, you will be able to follow. So let's begin by looking at Job chapter 6 verse 1. And I want you to put yourself in a very humble state. As if you were sitting with a loved one in the hospital who just lost someone very dear to them. I want you to approach this chapter with that mindset where your heart is very low. You have few words to speak and you're listening to someone expose their soul for the first time about the pain and the misery and the anguish. Because friends, if this doesn't move you to tears, I don't know what will. Listen to the soul of this man as he cries out for help and allow the Spirit of God to move you and to touch you, maybe for someone that you will meet in the future, maybe for yourself as you go through such hardship. Let's begin. Job chapter 6, verse 1. Job answers Eliphaz after he has given this declaration to Job. Keep that in mind. Job says, if my misery could be weighed, if you could pile the whole bitter load on the scales, it would be heavier than all the sand of the sea. Is it any wonder that I'm screaming like a caged cat? The arrows of God Almighty are in me, poison arrows, and I'm poisoned all through. God has dumped the whole works on me. Donkeys bray and cows moo when they run out of pasture. So don't expect me to keep quiet in this. Do you see what God has dished out on me? It's enough to turn anyone's stomach. Everything in me is repulsed by it. It makes me sick. All I want is an answer to one prayer, a last request to be honored. Let God step on me, squash me like a bug, and be done with me for good. I'd at least have the satisfaction of not having blasphemed the holy God. 
before being pressed past the limits. Where's the strength to keep my hopes up? What future do I have to keep me going? Do you think I have nerves of steel? Do you think I'm made of iron? Do you think I can pull myself up by my bootstraps? Why, I don't even have any boots. When desperate people give up on God Almighty, their friends at least should stick with them. Now, Job feels abandoned here by his friends because they are approaching him with this cliche, religious, church lingo, these pious answers and responses, and Job feels as if they're not listening to him. You see, friends, when we are suffering, we don't need to hear a cliche. We don't need to hear a much-quoted Bible verse. We need people to get down in the ditch with us and be real with us. And that's not what Job's friends have done, and he's about to unleash on them. He says, my brothers are fickle as a gulch in the desert. One day they're gushing with water, and the next day they're dry. He says they arrive so confident, but what a disappointment. You, my so-called friends, there's nothing to you. One look at a hard scene, and you shrink in fear. It's not as though I asked you for anything. I didn't ask you for one red cent, nor did I beg you to go out on a limb for me. So why all this dodging and shuffling? In other words, why all the cliches? Why all the religious banter? Confront me with the truth and I'll shut up. Show me where I've gone off the track. Honest words never hurt anyone. But what's the point of all this pious bluster you offer me? You pretend to tell me what's wrong with my life, but you treat my words of anguish as so much hot air. Are people only mere things to you? Are friends just items of profit and loss? Look me in the eyes. Do you think I would lie to your face? Think it over. There's no double talk here. Think carefully. In other words, what we said yesterday, consider what you're saying. You see, my integrity is on the line. Can you detect anything false in what I say? Don't you trust me to discern good from evil? In other words, Job's saying, look, you know me. You're my friends. Don't you think I'd know if I sinned against God? You're not listening to what I'm saying. This chastisement, this punishment is not coming because of something that I've done. And yet Job doesn't have the foresight to see that it is a purging process, as we discussed yesterday, to make him a better man, to make him a better follower, a better disciple. And nor do Job's friends. Everyone is focused upon why God is doing this to Job and not what it is that he would have Job learn from it. And so Job is not only facing the pain and the misery and the agony from this attack by Satan, but Job is experiencing the loneliness of knowing that he has to walk through this ordeal by himself. Because no matter how much his friends offer him support, they cannot meet him in his tragedy. And friends, I fear that that's so true of us. I know based upon my own life experiences that as loving and as good intentioned as many people were, no one met me where I was in my pain, where I was in my agony. I had to walk through those days by myself. And maybe that's the way the Lord intends it. Because if we can't find answers, if we can't find help in anyone else, we're only left to turn to him. And isn't that the point of it all, that he get all of our adoration, all of our love, all of our appreciation, that we look to him alone as our strength through such times of sorrow? Isn't that the lesson to be learned? And maybe that's the lesson that Job is learning. You see, we don't know much about Job's life. And although God said he was perfect, and he was beyond reproach. Job still was not God. There was a need in his life, and God is revealing that need to Job so that the relationship 
can become much greater and much more rewarding. Well, friends, I wish that I had some positive words to leave with you today, but on this chapter, I don't because this chapter is filled with pain unlike anything we have probably ever known. Yet each of us can identify because we each have suffered and experienced pain, hurt, and disappointment in this life. So let me leave you with this one thought. Every one of us, before we arrive in the kingdom of heaven, we must walk through hell. And for each of us, that hell is different. For one person, it may be a prison sentence. For another person, it may be a disease. For another person, it may be the loss of a loved one. But all of us are going to experience hell in some fashion before we can ever enter into the kingdom of heaven. But as I reminded you the other day, I'll remind you again. As David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, or through hell itself, thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. What a glorious God we serve. And when we get there, friends, and we look back and we see all the times we thought we were alone and he was there, the only thing that will leave our lips is hallelujah. Praise the Lamb, friends. Oh, hallelujah. Well, I trust that your day will be blessed today. I pray that you'll experience the love and grace of God. I pray that you'll walk in the Spirit. I pray that joy will be upon your lips and praise in your hearts. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you, and I'll see you on the next video.